Okay, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and finally finish this pesto. Uh, I had a bunch of, I don't know, taking care of the kids and stuff. I went ahead and brought my little cabs in here. So I'm gonna get my stand for the TV. So, the thing with pesto, it is true what they say, it's, uh, it's kind of hard to mess it up. Uh, basically, just remember to taste with everything. Uh, one, one, e one easy trick I'm going to use, I'll just crush this garlic, peel it, I'm going to mince it up in a blender here and make a paste of that mixed with a little bit of roasted garlic that I roasted earlier. And, but then I'm going to still reserve some other roasted garlic for if I want more roasty flavor later. Uh, like I said, got my basil, got my pine nuts, and my cheese. Here's another thing too, if you're doing a big batch like this, you want to make sure uh, that you don't add the cheese to anything you're going to freeze. You can freeze it for two to three months. Uh, ice cube trays with saran wrap on them is a good thing because then uh, it's pre-portioned. Uh, pretty, pretty sweet trick there. And I got my processor. So all I'm going to do first is make a garlic paste with a little bit of salt and uh, olive oil with roasted garlic and some fresh garlic. And then I'm going to take that out. I'm not even going to clean the, you know, because it's going to go into the basil anyway. I'm not going to clean the processor. And then I'm going to reserve that so if I need more of a kick at the end, you want to make sure you season uh, at the end so you get a, you know, you want to nail the taste right, you want that taste right where you want it. So if uh, anything you're going to reserve for later, don't put the cheese in until the very end. Which I'm trying to make a big enough batch. We got a 13 year old that loves it. I'm trying to make a big enough batch that's going to last uh, till, it, till it starts coming up in spring, I reckon. So, a little bit of kosher salt, a little bit of virgin olive oil. And I'm going to make a uh, blend together of this uh, garlic. I'll go ahead and do that actually right now. We're going to get a little bit of action on the video. So, like I said, I'm putting all that in there. You know, once you when you roast your garlic, just cut the top off. I like to throw a little salt in and get some of that water out. Uh, and then you can, you know, I roast it maybe 300 degrees for, uh, who knows, 30, 30 minutes. Just until it gets soft enough that you can squeeze it right out of there. And you can smell the, the roastiness. The roasting makes it milder. So, this uh, fresh garlic is a lot more intense. That's why I'm going to reserve... So I'm going to take it out of here so we don't end up with uh, too garlicky of a, of a flavor. So, go ahead and do that. Got a little bit on the pants there. This thing's like garlic, but who cares? Alright, we're going to take that and then we'll get some blending action going. I like to wash my hands a lot. Too, just so that I don't have to get my hands all stinky with garlic on a regular basis. So, a little bit of salt. I think that helps break it down. I might be wrong about that. I don't think I made it up. I don't know, Matt. So, there we go. Some more blending action. Open it up. You want a little bit more of a paste. If you do this once a week, then you know you can even hand dice it and keep it in a little baby food jar with the oil. Do it once a week, then you never have to cut up garlic throughout the week. Which cuts down times that you have to wash your hands. Okay. Yeah, let's go ahead and just pulse it till it's because you know it's gonna get pulsed again. Okay, that's the garlic. That's the garlic paste that we're gonna use for for our, uh, our garlic flavor. Let me go ahead and close this because I don't know. Maybe I got enough time to finish it, but let's see. Let me just put it up for you. 